Hey everyone, it's Nathan again. This is going to be the start of a new series on generating an autocomplete extension for VS Code. In this uh, first video, I'm going to be walking you through how to set up a language server for VS Code so that you can get your own recommendations. All right, enough talking, let's get to it. All right, we're going to first off start by installing some npm packages. First, we're going to install the yo package. This package allows us to quickly generate a template for our VS Code extension. I'm going to be using an older version than the latest because I was having a little bit of issues using the latest. And then we're also going to install the actual template that Yo is going to use, which is the generator code template, which is for VS Code. Once you've had that installed, we can now just type Yo to start the library. And it's going to ask us some questions. So as you can see, I'm going to be using the code generator, which is for VS Code, and it's the only one that I have installed. We're going to be creating a TypeScript extension. I'm going to give it the name Code Complete. And I'm going to just use the recommended identifier. And the description, I'm just going to give it a simple one for called Autocompleting Code Using Deep Learning. And then I'm going to just accept the defaults that it has. Once it's done all of that, we can go ahead and CD into the project that is created and open it up in VS Code. Now, from this, you can see it gives us a nice structure for starting off our project. So we have a bunch of different configs. If we go over to the source folder, you can see the extension that it has loaded up for us. And this one's a very simple one. It just has a single command called hello world. And this just opens up an information message with the message hello world from code complete our extension. If you want to test this out really easy, you can just debug by pressing F5. This will open up a new VS Code window with the extension installed in it. And then we can run the extension by opening up the command palette and then searching for hello world and pressing enter. Now, as you can see, it opened up the information dialog box for us. All right, so let's get started with creating our project. So this one's going to be using a client server architecture. So I'm going to actually rename the source with our extension in it to client, since this extension is going to be the client part of our extension. If you see that open up, you can go ahead and close it. We'll modify that TS config later on. I'm going to now create the server folder as well as the server file. I'm going to call it server.ts. And we can close up for now and leave it blank. All right, so we're going to go now to the client. And we're, since we're using clients and uh, server architecture, we're going to actually have a separation of the dependencies. So I'm going to create a new package.json for it. It's going to be very simple, so I'm just going to give it a name. So code complete lsp client. And it's only going to have one dependency, which is going to be the VS Code language client library. And at the time of recording this, uh, the most recent version is 7.0.0. Uh, Now I'm going to just do the same, but for the server. So I'm going to create its own package.json. And this is going to be very similar to the client one. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop back into the client and copy what I have there and paste it here. The only thing is I'm going to change it to server here. And instead of language client, it's going to be language server. And I'm going to add one more dependency, which is how we're going to actually manage the actual documents that a person is developing on. And that's going to be the VS Code language server text document. And at the time of recording this, it's a version of 1.0.1. All right, so with that out of the way, we can now actually start writing some client code. So I'm going to go ahead to the extension.ts. 
And I'm going to remove all the boilerplate stuff that was auto-generated by the Yo library. Now I'm going to go ahead and import some stuff from the VS Code language client library. First one's going to be the actual language client itself. And the second is going to be the transport kind, which is just the type of protocol that we're going to be using. And so I'm going to import that from VS Code Language Client, specifically the Node version. As you can see, right now it has an error, so we actually need to install this. So I'm going to go ahead and cd into the client folder and run an npm install. As you can see, once that's installed, that error should go away. All right, so now we can start writing the client code. So I'm going to start off by creating a global variable for the client so that we have it accessible in both our activate and deactivate function. And then I'm going to just set this client equal to a new language client. And this language client just takes a few different parameters, the first is being its name. And then some server options and client options. Which we will write uh, right now. Okay, so I'm going to define the server options as just a simple dictionary. In the server options, there's going to be two different ones, a run configuration and a debug configuration. For the run configuration, we have to pass in a few arguments, that being the module, which is just the path to the actual server itself. So in order to do that, we're going to create another variable for storing where our server is located. So we'll call that server path. And this is just going to be equal to the context that as absolute path. And we're going to pass in the path to our actual server, starting from the root of our project. And lastly, we just have to import the path library. Now we can go back to our server options and add this as the module. And then we're also going to say the type of transport that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using that transport kind, and we're going to be using the, IC, uh, the IPC protocol. Now for the debug configuration, we're going to just do the exact same. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this. And just change it from run to debug. Next, we'll write the client options. The, this is a lot simpler, so we're just going to set this equal to uh, the type of document that we are wanting to have this extension work on. So we're going to say document selector, we're going to be using the file as the scheme, and we're going to specify that this needs to be for the Python language. Okay, so with that done, now all we have to do is start the client. So we're going to do client.start. And since we're starting the client and the activate, we also need to be able to stop the client. So in the deactivate, we're going to go ahead and just return the status of client.stop. Okay, now with the client done, we're going to go ahead and open up the server. And we're going to go ahead and import some of the stuff that we're going to need. So we're going to be creating a connection from the server. So we're going to import create connection from the VS Code language server library, specifically the node one again. And just like before, we need to install it. So we're going to go ahead and cd into the server and npm install that. And that should get rid of that import error. With that out of the way, we're now going to create the connection. So We'll just do, we'll create a variable called connection. And set it equal to the output from the create connection call. And this create connection takes in some features that we're going to be using. 
for the language server, and so we're going to just be using the proposed features.all flag. Now we have to create a documents manager. We're going to create a new text documents. We're going to pass in the text document class, which we're getting from the other library that the server is dependent on. And this is going to set up the document manager for us. Now, with those defined, we can now call the onInitialize function. We're setting up the connection. And we're going to put in a callback, which is going to take some parameters. But for our simple case, we're not actually going to do anything for the parameters. And what we're going to be returning is essentially the capabilities that our server is going to be able to provide. So the capabilities for this extension is just going to be on code completion. So we're going to be setting up the completion provider and also the resolve provider for the code completion. After that, we can now get started on writing the code for the actual completion. So we can do connection.oncompletion. This takes in a parameter. And this is where you would be able to get information from the text document using this parameters. But for this initial for this initial extension that we're writing right now, we're just going to hard code in some initial autocompletes. So to do that, we're going to return a list of dictionaries where each dictionary has a label. So this is going to be the actual thing that's going to show up in the autocompletion list. And we're going to give it a type, which is a complete item, which is a text. And we just give it a unique ID for data, which will be one. And we'll do that for one other one, which is going to be for an if statement. And we'll give it data too. Okay, so that's all we had to do for auto completion. Now we're going to actually go on to the auto completion result. So if they highlight our option, we can give them some more information on this choice. So here we just check which type of data it was that they've highlighted. So if it's the first one, we want to give it a more detailed description. So here we're just going to say that this loops through a block of code 10 times. And we're going to say for, for the documentation that this is just for the documentation, but you could add additional stuff here, such as a link. And we're going to do the exact same but in that alpha, else if clause for the second data. And we'll just say that this checks whether or not the variable i is less than 10, and that this is just documentation for the if statement. Now we just have to do configure some final listeners. So we're going to just say that the document manager is going to listen to different connection requests and that the connection is going to start listening to the client. Okay, so that basically does it for the client and server. Now we just have to deal with some configuration for our project. 
So if we open up the root package.json, we're going to delete this contributions part of our extension because we're not going to be using ex contributions for our extension. And we're going to change where our main file is since we're now having it in client slash extensions.js. Also, we're not being going to be using the command activation event. We're actually going to be doing it based on the language of the file that's currently open, which is going to be triggered on Python. Also, we're going to delete some of these scripts and add on our own. Since we have a more complicated set of installation instructions for this extension, we need to, after the root extension, the root package is installed. We need to CD into the clients and server and install those as well. Also, just from the structure of our project, I'm going to change the, this compile and watch for how the TypeScript is compiled to JavaScript. All right, with that out of the way, we can now go on to this TS config. And we're actually going to change this from client to root directory. And since we have our project split into multiple folders, we're going to actually add a reference here. So we're going to just reference the folder for the client and the server. As you can see, these have errors and saying that we don't have a tsconfig in the client or the server. So we're actually going to go ahead and create that by just copying this root level one and pasting it in to the client and the server. So let's go ahead and open up the client tsconfig and we're going to edit it a little bit. First, we're going to just get rid of those references because we no longer need them for the client config. And also, since this is a composite tsconfig, we have to set the composite to true for the compiler options. And we're just going to do the exact same for the server one as well. OK. Now we can go ahead and compile our entire project. So we can type in the command line at the root of the project, npm run compile. So this will compile everything. And if you go over to your client and open up your extension.js, you'll see all of the TypeScript that we wrote compiled down to the correct JavaScript version. And this will happen also for the server as well. Now we can do npm install to go ahead and install the root package.json as well as the client and server. And now we are ready to test out the application. So we can go ahead and press F5 to launch a new Visual Studio window with our extension installed. And let's go ahead and create a test.py file and start writing. So as you can see, when we start writing for, we now have an option for the 4i and range 10 that we wrote for our server. And when we highlight it, we can now see the detailed instructions and the documentation section. section. And if we go ahead and try to do this for an if statement, we get the same thing. So we can see now we have a if i less than 10. So now you know how to set up a VS Code extension for a language server, how to generate auto completions yourself, some hard coded rules. And in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to generate auto completions using deep learning. See you in the next one.